Because black people, if you know, they don't care about their own lives. Black women and black men don't respect one another. They hate all white people and they hate the Mexicans. They love being on welfare, affirmative actions, reparations. Okay, okay, okay. They have no more character. I, 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 those, are, those are sort of Fox News talking points. I think that's not No, no, not no. True. Those are Jesse Peterson talking points. Jesse, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know about your show, but so you're talking about the great white hope, but you're a black guy <laughs> as black as the ace of space. <laughs> so square that square that circle. How, uh, how, how well, do you come- I um, I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama, right outside of Montgomery, Alabama, Alabama. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. And during that time, uh, black Americans didn't hate, you know, they didn't hate the white people. They were not blaming white folks. Uh, you have black families together, both parents together, grandparents, and they taught you to work. And even though we were working on a plantation, we were taught to work and uh, respect one another, treat people the way we would like to be treated. And that during that Jim Crow law thing, it was from the Democratic Party established by the Democrat. And all white people were not in favor of the uh, Jim Crow law. And so all white people were not evil and that was good or bad at all race. So I didn't grow up hating, mm. hating anyone. I, I, I grew up seeing people as they are. But when the civil rights movement started, which should have never happened, they turned blacks away from God, away from family, away from the country. And they started using black people for their own personal gain. And it has been downhill for black people. So I'm about, I'm about the person, not the mm-hmm. color. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Dr. King's dream of, of uh, yeah. judging people by the content or the character, not the well, color of their skin. Well, but they I would took point that, out, would, they took his dream out, and yeah. turned it into a nightmare. I would point out Dr. King was a Christian. Yeah, you know, he, he was, was a, a real ba- one. Baptist minister, yeah. yeah. And uh, Malcolm X was, you know, of the nation of Islam until the end. Um, you know, so it's, it's not like the civil rights movement was not a religious movement. It, it very much was, at least in part, uh, motivated by religious um, morals about the equal right. treatment of people. Um, but it turned to be fate, though. Only Dr. King was a real Christian. The rest of those so-called civil rights leaders was children of the lie, meaning that they were children of the devil. Um, uh, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Uh, children of the devil? Yeah. Satan is their daddy, not God. Oh, well, I don't believe All in Satan. All in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did, so you write a book? Did you write yeah. a book uh, on free speech? Yeah, so this is the giving the devil his due is my defense of free speech, free thought, uh, heterodox thinking, thinking out of the box. You know, we have to uh, we have to listen to other what other people say because most of the time, much of the time, we're wrong about a lot of the things we believe. And the only way to correct the course that you might be going down the wrong course is to listen to other people. And um, and and we've gone the opposite way. Now, here's you know th- something that's b- been bothering me is that. You know, defense of free speech used to be a liberal cause. People on the left championed free speech and free thought, you know, going back um, into the 1960s and the free speech movement on college campuses like UC Berkeley and so on. Now liberals are trying to censor people particularly yeah. in college campuses yeah. and it's conservatives that are defending free speech. And I'm like, what the heck happened here? What the? Uh, would you? Oh, why did you? Why did you say as a black man? Why am I speaking this way? I'm just curious because I've always thought of um, of Barack Obama being elected president twice was a sign of moral progress. Like, okay, n- things aren't perfect for African Americans here, but the fact that we elected a black guy president twice is surely a sign that uh, some of the prejudices have attenuated a fair amount. Oh, I see. No, what they got worse under under Barack Obama. Because he's he's such an evil man, and he promoted people like Black Lives Matter, a far less liberal, radical, agitative group uh, that support. Well, uh, some some of them were radical, but yeah. What do we want? Kill cops? When do we want it now? Dead cops? When do we want well, it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not Obama invited them to the White House after that. Some of that happened, but not not them. I mean, as a black guy, don't you think Black Lives Matter too? I don't think that Black Lives Matter at all. I think lives, I mean, all, all lives matter. All matter. And yeah. not just because black people, if you know, they don't care about their own lives. They fat, they black, high blood pressure. They are angry, having their babies out of wetlock. Black women and black men don't respect one another. They hate all white people and they hate the Mexicans. Uh, they love being on welfare, affirmative actions, 
reparations. Okay, okay, okay. They have no more character. I, I, those, those are those are sort of Fox News talking points. I think that's no, no, not no. True. Those are Jesse Peterson talking points. Okay, Jesse Peterson. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that's a, a generalization that doesn't apply to many, if not most, African Americans. Oh no, that's not true. I may I mean, not I know my flowers, but I know black people. <laughs> well, you probably know black people better than I, and you yes. live in L.A. I used to live in Altadena for 25 years, and that's oh. that's a racially mixed uh, community. Yeah, pretty much every black person I ever saw there went off to work every day. They had uh, you know ch wives and kids and spouses and children, families. They you know went to good schools. They went to church. You know, not at all like you know that sort of stereotype of the welfare queen living off the the dole as a you know single mother it, it, it refuses to get married because they're getting a paycheck and so on yes that happens but 77 percent of black but, but babies born out of wetlock there's poor white trash you know poor white trash that does that sort of thing too that uh, capitalizes on the welfare state so i think it would be a, a little unfair to characterize uh, certainly unfair that what most year african you, americans are like that what was the year that you lived in after dina Oh, I just I just moved from there three years ago, oh, okay. and so I lived in Altadena from 1989 through 2017. Well, those so, days oh, are behind us now. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, my office is in Altadena. I go to the, you know we're surrounded by black people. I They're believe seventy percent, seventy between seventy and seventy-seven percent of black babies born out of wetlock. That was unheard of when yeah. I was growing up. It was yeah. a shame. Yeah, I know uh, Larry, Larry Elder. You probably know Larry, Larry Very Elder. Very well, yes. Um, and you know, he's—I consider him a friend and, yeah. and colleague. And he's got the numbers on that. And I have to—I have to—I've checked his numbers. They seem solid. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know about his, uh, about the percentage of children born out of wedlock and the lack of family structure and marriage and so on in the African American community. Yes, I, I would I would agree that's a, a good thing. But let's not stereotype too much where we say, well, if you're black and single then and you have children, you cannot raise um, a, a solid family. Well, well yes you can. A, a woman it, cannot it, it, raise a solid family and not be married. Yeah. No, it can be. Look at yeah. it, when I was growing okay, up. Okay, you're talking about on average. I would agree. On average it's better to have two parents than one. But let's not then generalize and say if you in particular, I meet you and, and I see you're single with a kid. I, I, I should not be assuming you're a bad parent or that your children are going to be uh, rotten because of that. Well, it's easier for a single male, single father to raise children than it is for a single mother. You, because, you mean because of income differences? Because of the authority. The real love is in the father, not in the woman. The, the love comes through the... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The love comes through the father, through the woman, through the children, from God, through Christ, through the man, through the woman, oh through the children. Oh, boy. Oh Other boy. than that, if the yeah, woman I'm doesn't have a man, then she I has no love. I can't go down that road with you on that. Now, I, I think women love their children just as much as men. There's no they don't have love. hierarchical authority there. They don't have no. it. <laughs>